Hello, I'm glad to be able to make some introductory remarks at this conference and at the same time I'd like to send greetings to Jerry and Luke whom I've met um, at past events. Now, I sometimes call myself the university's resident heretic. In fact, I own, as it were, four heresies of which memory of water is one of them. And the uh, thing I sometimes say about memory of water is that um, it is easily disproved by any one of many um, easy to understand, but wait for it, fallacious arguments. So people have these nice reasons for not believing in any of my heresies, but they don't actually work when you study them closely. And uh, in the case, let me just give one example in the case of memory of water. Um, people talk about experiments on how fast the hydrogen bonds relax. And these are very, they relax very rapidly, an uh, order of femtoseconds. And so they say, well, that, uh, these bonds, since they, it all changes so quickly, you can't really have any memory for any significant length of time. Well, the problem with that is that there's more than one um, relaxation time, or, or there can be more than one time scale for a given material, and uh, this you can see by considering ferromagnets. Um, with a ferromagnet, the spins relax very fast, uh, the order of microseconds, um, and yet, as we know, um, a ferromagnet can remain magnetized for um, a, a year, for, for years. Okay, so the argument just doesn't work. Now, my, my interest in the subject came from my contact with Jacques Van Venist, um, whom I actually met uh, when he was not, uh, and he didn't become famous or notorious at all. Um, this is at a conference in Bermuda, where he talked about his experiments. Uh, so that was all very interesting, and then came this um, silly business with Nature. Um, Jack submitted his paper to Nature, and uh, the referees couldn't see anything wrong with it, which was a bit embarrassing for the editor, John Maddox. Uh, well, he got out of it by saying, well, we'll publish your paper, as long as you agree that we can go to your lab and see if we can okay the experiment. Now you may think that's a funny way to proceed, shouldn't you um, see if the experiment is okay before you publish it, you don't want to publish wrong work, but that wouldn't have fitted with Maddox's agenda which was to have a very public attack on the, um, on the work. Anyway, Ben Venist um, fell into Maddox's trap, he um, uh, the paper was published, and uh, so along came the Maddox team. Maddox himself was a physicist, a magician, James Randi, and one other person who didn't have any real expertise in biology. So that's a rather funny business. You send people to check out an experiment who are not experts in the field concerned. The reason seemed to be that Maddox thought that... Um, uh, magician Randy would find a fault with the um, experiment and that would be it, no expertise needed. He would uh, find some trickery or something they'd forgotten that, that didn't come out. Anyway, uh, Maddox uh, published this paper. He, As editor he could publish it without refereeing, uh, by passing the usual process, um, memory of water or high dilution experiments, a delusion. Uh, and um, uh, so they couldn't see that the refutation had, was really flawed in itself. Well, things went better in other fields. In fact, I was able to persuade um, the department to make a talk by Ben Venist. It's um, uh, a weekly seminar. That went pretty well. Uh, the only problem was it was a bit uh, technical for physicists, but anyway, um, people listened and heard the evidence. Things went less well with another seminar I arranged. Um, a rather controversial person 
working in um, memory of water, in fact a homeopathic doctor, well he uh, was, um, uh, while he was visiting I thought he might as well give a talk so people could um, learn what the ideas were and there was no great problem uh, first of all I, I believe the um, talk was advertised in the uh, talks uh, university talks website uh, and there were problems I thought I'd invite um, a person hostile to uh, homeopathy um, David Cahoon uh, to see what he had to say about the arguments um, and he thought he'd tell his followers on Twitter. <laughs> There's an amazing result. Head of department came along demanding to talk to me and he said uh, dozens of people have written in saying why are we allowing this chap to give a talk? And he um, gave the usual argument. He's saying I, I can disprove uh, memory of water, show it doesn't exist. He came up with one of the uh, standard arguments on relaxation time. Um, and then did a kind of blackmailing thing. He said uh, he threatened to uh, expose me to a world for my bad judgment if I didn't um, cancel it. Well, I ignored that. It went ahead, but there was another bit of drama. Uh, actually, the uh, speaker was uh, on a tour in the UK with talking at a conference, and he had his um, son take videos of his talks. So while he was setting up, um, one of the um, head of the department's people came along and said, sorry, you're not allowed to video. So the video was taken down. Uh, but since audio recording uh, had not been forbidden, I got out my iPod and recorded it. Um, another bit of drama there. Uh, I realized I'd, I discovered I'd left my uh, clip-on mic at home. So I phoned my wife, located the microphone, uh, drove to the lab and just in time she arrived and I uh, clipped on the microphone, plugged it into my iPod hoping it would work and it did work. And in fact both um, Ben Venice's and um, this speaker's talks you can see uh, on the University Media Service site. If you go to my homepage, click on video and audios, you'll see those talks. So well that's what it's like working in heretical areas. Um, now I suspect, uh, as I think Jerry Pollock does, that there is um, interesting physics there and um, so I wish you all the best of luck um, discussing the subject and um, uh, good luck.